the use of number 198. And can it be that I shall gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Die he for me who causes pain, for me who him to death pursue. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldest die for me? 198.
Over to you, Elder. Thank you. I was just waiting. Thank you. Far from all care, we hail the Sabbath morning. Oh, waving fields, and from the distant sea, swell notes of praises in harmony resounding as all creation turns her heart to thee. Today is God's holy Sabbath day. In some parts of the world, it's just beginning. In others, it's closing. In others like us that share a time zone, we are in queue as we turn to God today in the Sabbath day. We want to give God thanks and praise and gratitude. I want to open arms, extend arms, Welcome all to our service today. We thank God for his mercy, his protection and providence during the week and for keeping us as we meet on this Sabbath day. I want to welcome all our members, those who are shut in, who can get online. We want to welcome you as well. Our newly baptized members, uh, visiting friends or prospective members. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus and take him at his word. So I want to welcome those who are online from overseas as well. A hearty welcome to you, a blessed Sabbath day to you as well. And may as we worship today, may we find God's presence later and may we experience his goodness to us every day. We are called to worship. Oh God, you are our God. Earnestly we seek you today. Our souls thirst for you. Our whole being longs for you. Because we have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory, we can respond. Lord, your love is better than life itself, and we declare that our lips will glorify you. We will praise you as long as we live, and in your name we will lift up our hands to do your work. Lord, we will be satisfied if you feed us, and we will now sing praises to your name. Amen. From whom all blessings flow, praise Him, all creatures here below. Raise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise from the sun. Adorable Father, we come to you at this morning hour, raising our voices in praise and gratitude. You have been good to us and you have preserved us in the land of the living, keeping us better than we ever thought we would be able to be. Indeed, it is your desire that your people have superb health. And today you're sending a message that will help us to become more healthy. Bless your spoken word to our hearts. Bless all those who are listening. Bless all those who will hear in the future. And may the words that we listen to and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight during our worship and after today. Bless us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. It is our privilege to lift our voices in song to God. He has given us the assurance in his word that he knows when sparrows fall and that our hairs on our heads are numbered. That means God has intimate knowledge of us. In the hymn that we use for our opening hymn number 99, we are going to, with this songwriter, 
acknowledge the goodness of God because God will take care of you. The hymn number 99. marvelous assurance that God will take care of us. As we turn our attention now to this written word, we find for our script reading one verse, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36, which reads as follows. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. It is so short, I'll read it for you again. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. 
Today we have the assurance that we have a shepherd. And we are going to approach him now as Sister John Greenwich leads us to the throne of grace. church and a very happy sabbath to each one this may let us pray oh father in heaven we come before your throne of mercy this morning we are thankful to be found here in our right minds at your footstool whereby we can come and worship you in command and in, in, in obedience to your commandment father as we come we pray that first you will look upon us in love and mercy and forgive us for our way we have sinned in word and thought and in deed, so that our worship here today with you might be acceptable in your sight. We pray, dear Father, that you will continue to send your blessings upon us, continue to keep us in your care, and help us from day to day, that as we see your hand upon us, that we will truly give you the thanks and praise which is due only to your name. As we come this morning, Lord, we are thankful for being able to assemble on this platform. For even although our church is closed, yet we have church and we can reach far into far the lands. And we just want to thank you for this opportunity. Help us, dear Father, too, that we might remember our mission, and that is to help men and women, boys and girls, into your kingdom. So help us to use this opportunity wisely so that those who haven't heard you uh, of your love before or never um, really paid attention that we in our own way might encourage them to do so, so that they too might have a chance to live here for you and then live with you when you shall come. Father, we also pray, we also thank you for Jesus Christ who is the sinner's friend who left heaven and came on earth and died that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Day by day, may we recognize that your gift and may we accept your gift and follow in the way which you will lead us to. This morning, we ask to, that you will remember your church and its programs as we seek different avenues of how to reach out to those, the lost amongst us, we ask that you will give them, especially the leaders, the insight. Give them what it needs, even at, in this time, so that your message can go out and those in darkness would also come to the light and to you, know you, whom to know is life eternal. Also, look upon your church, those who are under persecution at this point in time. Father, there are many things that, um, confront your church there's natural disasters even that one there in St. Vincent there there's there are many different things that plague your people all over in India and all about and I pray dear father that you was come near to them even this Sabbath hour come near to them and give them the assurance that you're still with them that you are just a prayer away and that their best hope is to trust in you and to hold on to you. We know too that 
you will send relief in your own time, but in the instant, help them that they might be made faithful to you. Father, we recognize the lateness of the young time in which we live, and we pray that you will help us to redeem the time and help prepare others and all of ourselves to meet you as our Lord and Savior. Bless our worship today and help us that the message that we get today might linger long in our hearts so that we too might, that might lead to reform in our lives and we too might be able to share it with others so that they too can catch a glimpse and that their lives might be better lived here on this earth and then with you on the earth made you. Now may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts, the Lord, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear a God for more blessings flow. This today we turn our attention to our stewardship emphasis. You know we are in a virtual setting, but as I also mentioned, the treasury is not closed. Your tithes and offerings can be collected, just call or indicate, and they'll be collected from you. Today, I'm focused on putting God first. Putting God first can be difficult. What can we learn from Solomon, who refused to put God first? Everything started well for Solomon. The way of the crown led him to ask for wisdom. The one thing needed most, his request was fulfilled. And God also blessed Solomon's reign with wealth, health, and prosperity. In time, however, Solomon's wisdom turned into rationalization. He uses intelligence and intellect to provide rational excuses as to why he broke many of God's established laws. Solomon used forced labor to build the house of the Lord, as that must have seemed more efficient. Solomon Marry princesses from many other nations so he could forge peace treaties with his enemies. Solomon built altars to his wives' gods as a way of welcoming them into his kingdom. Solomon built a palace to be three times larger than the temple so he could accommodate his large household. All these rationalizations seemed to make sense and at first brought much wealth to the kingdom. The, the kingdom. However, they led to high taxes and injustices that were not sustainable. God has given the laws that lead to long-term prosperity and peace, but Solomon used his intellect to bend them according to his pleasure. Solomon did not put God first, and Israel was divided into two kingdoms within months of his death. Today, it is still common, it is still common to see individuals doing the same. And it's our wish that we will continue to put God first in all that we do and don't do as others. We are still rationalizing and bringing God's law. Putting God first means taking his word seriously and following it. 
the simplicity of a child following the instructions of a lo loving parent is perhaps the best antidote to our own demise. God stands ready to open the doors to health, wealth, and prosperity to many of us according to his plans for our lives. Sometimes God keeps a door shut because our faith and future will be compromised if we were to walk through it. God's faithfulness evokes our own response. If we are faithful to small things, God will put us in charge of greater things. We are stewards, glad to serve the master in taking care of his resources. Solomon refused to put God first. The consequences were terrible for him and the people around him. God's love compelled us to put his kingdom first. Why is Solomon's example is a warning for us today? As, as today is the contemplate on this, let us put God first in all that we do and say, and lean on our own understanding. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we worship you this morning virtually for tithes and our offerings. We pray for the courage to put you first in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. amen. It is said that a picture is worth a thousand words. This morning, we are going to hear several thousand words in the pictures and the scene that comes up next. Just as children love stories, adults love them even more. And at this time, the media team is going to share with us the children's story, which as captivating as it is for them, will also hold our attention. The children's story at this time. The Holy Tales. Hello, my name is Tubby. I live here in this wonderful library and I love to eat books. I live here with my friends, Gumbo and Freckles. Gumbo, Freckles, come out, come out, wherever you are. Over there, on that great book, is Grand Old Holy. She is really old and wise and tells us wonderful stories when she is awake, that is. Oh, and we love to sing. children, I have been waiting to tell you this wonderful story from the Bible. I hope today's story is as wonderful as the rest. Absolutely. You're going to love this one. But do listen carefully. We promise. We promise. Today, the story I'm about to tell you is about Joseph's wonderful coat. Jacob had 12 sons from his two wives, Rachel and Leah. Of his 12 sons, he loved Joseph the most. When Joseph became 17 years old, his father gifted him a very special and beautiful coat for his birthday. It was made out of many colored threads and had long sleeves. It was a very special coat which was normally only given to the eldest son. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father had given him the special coat, they were very jealous and angry. Now Joseph would often have nice and wonderful dreams and he could almost always understand what each dream meant. Once he told his brothers the latest dream that he had had, he said, I dreamt that all of us were tying up bundles of wheat that we had harvested. 
while mine were straight and standing, yours bowed down to mine. His brothers were very angry. They said, Does that mean that you will rule over us? The dream made his brothers extremely angry and they also started hating him a lot. Joseph very soon had another dream. In this dream, the sun, the moon and the eleven stars were bowing down to him. He rushed to his father to tell him all about his dream. As he told his dream to his father, Jacob got very angry and said, Son, do you really think that one day your mother, your brothers and I will bow down to you? This made Joseph very sad since he was just telling them about a dream he had had and he loved his brothers and his parents very much. Now that I am done with the story, I am going to ask the question. What did Jacob gift Joseph when he turned 17? Oh, I know, I know. He gifted him a multicolored coat. That is absolutely right. Hope you enjoyed the story. Now off you go. Bye bye. God loves me. God loves me. In my Bible book, it says that God The Holy loves Tales. Me. Isn't it wonderful to know that God is concerned with us? Just as he took care of Joseph through all his exploits and his bad circumstances, he will take care of us today. In response, we promise to do the Lord something. And it is that we will go. Our special music now, under the, th the theme, I will go, will detail for us how we will do that. The special music, I will go. According to our scripture reading, he had compassion on those whom he met. Some he touched, 
some he spoke to, but when it was all over, they were better for it. May it be that as we touch people's lives while we go, they will be better for it. The sermon presented by Sister Priscilla Prevo today is one about how Jesus went having compassion and touching people's lives. At this time, we're going to join the presentation by Sister Priscilla Prevo in the message under the theme, I will go. Happy Sabbath to everyone. I'm delighted to greet you today in the precious name of Jesus. Today ends our health week. It's unusual to have health week during the month of May. However, the, the Inter-American Division decided for this year that we will have health week in May with the focus on addiction. And so I'm happy for all those of you who came out during the week, whether in through the virtual means or in, your, in person at your church to listen and to participate in this health week, which was focused on addiction recovery. This is a very important area aspect that have not been dealt with uh, before in, in, in mass. However, it is recognized that there are different types of addiction and that persons who are addicted need help. And we should somehow provide some sort of assistance to these individuals so that they can overcome their addiction. So I trust that you have been helped this week. If perchance you have been experiencing some sort of addiction or you would have gleaned or gained knowledge as to how you can help someone you know who may be experiencing a, this problem of addiction. Before going into the presentation today, I also at this time wish to take the opportunity to thank all those who participated in the recent senior care training program conducted by the health ministries of East Caribbean Conference. We had about 170 persons participating in this virtual program. 110 completed and received certificate of completion, having submitted the uh, assignment, uh, care plan, senior care plan assignment. Others received certificate of participation. I must commend all our facilitators who did an excellent job. And uh, just to mention in person, we had, we had not in person, but also mention the names of those who facilitated this program. We had Dr. Nathalie Graves, we had Dr. Cambridge Maxwell, uh, Dr. Marcia Cambridge Maxwell, Dr. Cheryl Coppin, and her colleague, Dr. Gail Wicks. We had Brother Michael Bell, podiatrist, we had um, uh, Sister or Nurse Adora Toussaint, Nurse Donabel Pierre, Nurse Jolene Louis, Nurse Marcia Brathwaite Reese, Nurse, uh, um, Nurse Clotilde Brathwaite, and uh, we also had Sister Diane Sobers, Sister Alia James Schillingford, Sister Esther Selman, dietitian. Sister Sandra Belgrave, who did uh, hearing uh, assistance with hearing impaired and hearing for the seniors. Um, we also had attorney at law, Dr. or attorney at law, Sister Yakima Coffey, and of course myself. These were the facilitators for the program. And from all reports and from the feedback that we have gotten, the program was well received and it was timely according to the reports we have gotten. So to all our facilitators, we say a special thank you. And of course, to the administrative assistant, Sister, Sister Cecil Connell, who did all the, the work in getting con contact with, in contact with the participants. She did an excellent job and we say special thanks to her. 
and also to Sister Hoyt, who used her platform and was present with us as a host for the program every Sunday afternoon. Program ran for eight weeks, and for this, we are thankful. We also thank the administration for being um, supporting this program fully, um, especially the president. He supported was there at the beginning and also at the close of the program. We also had a sister Belkis who paid us a visit and did the uh, virtually, of course, and did the uh, the 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 um, special feature or the feature address for us at the close the, of the program during the graduation ceremony. So again, we 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 were blessed and we will to use the technology to bring out such an important program so that our seniors can be adequately cared for even as we aim to go and meet the needs of those who are in need. Today, the presentation today, in fact, for the week has been prepared by our, I would say, outgoing IAD health director, who is Sister Belkis Archbold, and um, she prepared this message, and I will endeavor to present to you today with just a little um, modification. The topic entitled, I will go showing, I will go following in the footsteps of Jesus, showing compassion and sharing hope. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, we give you thanks for your wondrous love towards us. Thank you for everything that you have done, what you are doing and what you will continue to do in, for and through us. We thank you, Lord, for the work that Sister Belkis have done with the, in the IAD for the past two uh, terms that she have served. And we are grateful that you have blessed us through her ministry. Continue to be with us even as we go through this message today. Bless all those who are listening, whether virtually or whether they may be uh, at a church at this time. We pray that you'll bless each one and that the information shared will help us as we go out to help others, those who are in need, even those who are uh, in need and trying to recover from addiction. Have your way now, we pray. Take this message and present it in your way, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our scripture text for today, taken from Matthew chapter 9, verse 38. Matthew 9, 38 tells us, But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. The key word here is compassion. Jesus, when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion because they were there as though they had no shepherd. Many were sick. Many were having difficulties and, 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 and they were really having a difficult time. But Jesus had compassion. The word compassion can be described as having pity or concern for those who are going through suffering or difficulties. And as God's people, as God's children, as health ministers, we ought to have compassion. If we do not have compassion, we will not be able to meet the needs of suffering humanity. We'll have no, 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 no love, no care, no concern for those. And I can tell you, when you look at the, listen to the news, and when you look at the, the, the persons, what is happening in our world today, if Jesus was here in person, he would have compassion on his gun. Whatever he would do or he could do to help to resolve the situation, he would do it. And so Jesus has no hands but our hands. He has no ears but our ears, no eyes but our eyes to see and to hear the needs of suffering humanity. In, in Ministry of Healing, page 17, he says, uh, the servant of the Lord says, the Savior's work was not restricted to any time or place. His compassion knew no limit. When I worked in the St. Joseph Health District, I, I, was, I, was, I was boxed in by the boundaries of La Escola to the north, 
and, uh, and Taru to the south. However, when I received the call of God, I realized that I could do much more um, without those boundaries. And so I took early retirement and said to God that I wanted to be available to be used by him whenever and wherever he chooses to. And here I am with East Caribbean Conference. So on so large a scale did he conduct his work of healing and teaching that there was no building in Palestine large enough to receive the multitudes who thronged him. In page, on page 19, she continues, she says, during his ministry, Jesus devoted more time to preaching than to, sorry, more time to healing than to preaching. His miracles testified to the truth of his words that he came not to destroy, but to save. In Desire of Ages, page 504, uh, uh, Sister White continues, she says, Christ has linked his interest with that of humanity. Freely he have received, he says, freely give in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8. Many who profess his name have lost sight of the fact that Christians are to represent Christ unless there is practical self-sacrifice for the good of others in the family circle, in the neighborhood, in the church, and wherever we may be, then whatever our profession, we are not Christians. So brethren today, if we do not have that kind of compassion and we do not practice self-sacrifice for the good of others, the servant of the Lord says, we are not Christians. So what are we doing? We are taking the name of Christ in vain. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 34, teaches us a lesson that must be present in our lives. As followers of Christ, we must follow the teachings just as he did with his disciples. As we commit ourselves by saying, I will go, and follow the example that Christ left us in his years of ministry when he was with his disciples. When Jesus was with his disciples, he went about teaching and healing in the oh, synagogues and with every manner of sickness that was around. Those who came to him and, and, and the servant of the Lord tells us that he had compassion for the hungry. He had compassion for the sick. He had compassion for mourners. He had compassion for the sinners. Those who were hungry, he fed the multitude. He healed the sick. Those who were dead, he raised the dead. And the sinners, he saved them. He said to the woman caught in, adul in adultery, go and sin no more. Thy sins have been forgiven you. And many who him he healed, he also uh, said that their sins were forgiven. Christ left us his example and his story so we could learn from them. In Romans chapter 15 verse 4, the apostle Paul says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written what? For our learning, so that we through comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Let us follow his example by being compassionate with those who are less fortunate. You know, um, over the past month during the um, COVID, uh, during the pandemic here, I've, I've seen um, folks whom we call um, Paro come, they come at my, at my door and they come and ask for, for food, they ask for water, they ask for <laughs> sometimes some of the things they ask for. I said, no, I don't have any of this. You know, they want a Coke or they want a soft drink or they want, um, you know, things like this. I said, no, whatever I have, I give. I have food, I give you. I have, well, there's one particular guy who um, does cleaning. He used to walk the streets with a bottle of, of rum and that was, that was his, his, his signature. 
Um, but I noticed he been coming and he asked me to weed. I gave him cutlass and he weed, he weed, sorry, he weed the grass and then um, I paid him. But then I noticed he was taking the money to buy rum. So he came one day with a bottle and I said, no, I'm not going to pay you anymore. I am going to buy the groceries for you. So when I do my groceries month end, I buy some groceries for him and he get his, his, his package. So um, I, I, I know God plays the, he said the poor will always have with us and uh, they are there to really test our, our unselfishness and generosity. Helping others, in hel I'm helping myself, certainly. Practicing compassion brings health to the body and mind. It releases stress. It makes you feel happy. You really feel happy when you help others. And when you, when you go out, I know when I visit the seniors and, you know, sometimes they are not expecting you to come and you visit, they say, God will bless you. And thanks for coming. And, you know, I really wanted to see you. I wanted, and, and you've really come in time. You know, there is a special blessing there. Your immune system strengthens. It helps you to sleep better. The sleep of a laboring man or woman is sweet, the Bible tells us. And uh, um, when we help others, it helps us to sleep well. Release toxins from your body by relaxing the body. There are several examples of what compassion and acts of kindness can do for your health and well-being. According to one example is that of Mother Teresa, Dr. David McClelland of Harvard University conducted a study with 132 volunteers and uh, volunteer students. He did, they took saliva samples and uh, um, they allow the participants of that study to watch a video. They did the saliva test before. When uh, we have Mother Teresa, the video was about Mother Teresa performed um, acts of kindness and help those in need in India. After watching the video, another saliva test was uh, taken and found that the IgA or immunoglobulin um, substance in the protective saliva of the immune system that is, um, helps fight respiratory infections, rose significantly and remained elevated for a while, while volunteers continue to think of particular scenes from the film. So here it is, they, even after the film was over, after they viewed the film, and they were still thinking about it, their IgA increased. That is significant. In 2004, the Alcoholic Anonymous study of data collected from Project Match found that recovering alcoholics who helped other addicts were more likely to stay sober when compared to those who did not help others. And 94% of those who helped others recovering addicts noticed a marked decrease in depression. These examples that we have seen of studies and research confirm to us that our acts of benevolence and compassion towards the needy and helpless must be carried out by us who claim to be Christians. And this is why we conducted this senior care training early in the year, uh, because we know that the seniors are sometimes neglected. And sometimes it is not because people want to neglect seniors, but sometimes they really do not know how to care and how to manage, especially when some of the seniors are experiencing Alzheimer's or they may have a stroke. It can be very, very difficult for uh, caregivers. And so when caregivers know how to give care, they are better able to care. The addicts to drugs, alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, games, food, pornography, exercise, Shopping, yes, some people are addicted to shopping. They buy things, they just keep buying stuff and hoarding stuff. Must be cared for with respect and compassion. 
and shared hope as Jesus left us his example in his earthly ministry. The spirit of um, unselfish labor for others gives depth, stability, and Christ-like loveliness to the character and brings peace and happiness to its possessor. The aspirations are elevated. There is no room for sloth or laziness or selfishness. Those who thus exercise the Christian graces will grow and will become strong to work for God. They will have clear spiritual perceptions, a steady growing faith, and an increased power in prayer. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 tells us, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's the hope that we must share. Living with hope or hopelessness affects our physical, mental, or emotional and spiritual bodies. Hope is health and well-being. Helplessness is sickness and discomfort, according to Oscar Santana in El Santana. Things that I have to teach to help the hopeless. Many persons, addicts, they sometimes feel hopeless, but hope is to have faith in God's promises. Now, Hebrews 11 verse 1 tells us, now faith is a confidence that we hope for an assurance about what we do not see. And the King James Version says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Knowing God, Jesus is the basis of our hope. The more we know it, the stronger our faith and hope will be. Every problem, however great, is insignificant before God when you put your hope in him. Psalm 33 verses 20 to 22 says, We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. And when we have compassion for others, when we have compassion for those in need, then we will be able to share and to inspire hope in them. Suffering leads us to hope. According to Romans chapter five, verses three to five, Paul says, not only so, but we also glory in sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character results in hope. And hope does not put us to shame because Jesus, God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. God often draws from the worst moments of our suffering, the opportunity to shape our character for trials of forged character, which in turn produces hope. Ephesians chapter three, verse 20. Now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work in us. God is able, and we need to inspire that kind of hope in others. We are not saying that God will or he has to, but all we know is that he is able and he will if he chooses to. That's why we need to ask him. God's plan for us are always better than we imagine, extremely better. When we ask and wait in God, we discover that his ways are wonderful. Amen? God works with eternity in mind and his plans are well worth the wait. That's why Jeremiah 29, 11 says that he has great plans for us. He has plans to prosper us. He has plans to give us a future and a great end. So let us not get despondent. Let us not get discouraged. If you are here today and you are, you are going through a difficult time with maybe a habit, it could be even food, eating. Some people are addicted to food and you are having a difficult time. 
God is able and you can overcome by the grace of God. Look at the lights in the tunnel from hope, with hope. Uh -huh. There's light in the tunnel. Jeremiah. Uh -huh. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. Many times we see only the small light through the tunnel of our problems. We have no idea what will happen tomorrow. We are living within a pandemic and we do not know what tomorrow will be. We are, um, we are approaching the hurricane season. He said it might be an active season. We do not know. But we hope that God is in control. We know that he's in control and we hope that he will see us through. He will help us out. And he says he has big plans for his children, those who are in Christ have hopes for a good future. So let us not be discouraged as the songwriter says. Be not discouraged, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. When someone is in an addiction situation, only clinging to God and hoping him can help them get out of that dark tunnel. Otherwise, it will be circling cylindrically inside the tunnel, which, uh, which although you see the light, you cannot find the exit. This is a terrible situation, but only in Jesus is there hope today. There is a very close relationship with hope and health. According to Dr. Gary E. Fraser of Loma Linda University, and Dr. Fraser was our health, was our featured speaker, one of our guest speaker for Health Week in 2012. Yes, yeah, so he was here in Barbados. So if you remember, those of you who remember at this, um, this convention, he says SDAs have proven to be one of the world's most healthiest communities and with high life expectancy, thanks to their lifestyle and hope-based faith. Hope helps better tolerate pain. Yes, and that just reminds me of my daddy. He went through a lot of pain, but whenever, you know, we would um, share with him the blessed hope and even his exploits in, in the field of evangelism, you know, the pain is the way. It promotes mental health. It helps the immune system work better, you know? So even in this COVID-19 period, don't listen all the all the negatives that we hear against the vaccines these create more fear and more um stress among people stop listening to those things and trust god do what you have to do take your vaccine pray that's what i said pray and take your vaccine stop listening to things that depresses and things that stresses you out. Listen to, um, listen to credible information and the health ministry of the general conference. We believe in the Bible, the spirit of prophecy and the science. Yes, and science and the Bible doesn't conflict each other. So let us not listen to all the voices that are, that are shouting out there. Let us listen to the voice of God and he will direct us accordingly. Thank you. Help hopeful addicts have more adaptive ability or ability to solve their problem. Our only hope of succeeding in doing good to the people of the world who come to our sanitariums or who come to our office as patients, who come to our homes, and to our congregations as visitors is that every member and staff of the church maintains a living connection with God. And it is by so doing that we will be able to help them. Wake up and get out of your comfort zone and answer the call, I will go. Following in the footsteps of Jesus, showing compassion and sharing hope. This world is a vast laser house, but Christ came to heal the sick, to proclaim deliverance to the captives of Satan. He was in himself health and strength. He imparted his life to the sick, 
the afflicted, those possessed of demons. He turned away none who came to receive his healing power. None who came to him left unhelped. The pleasure of doing good to others imparts a glow to the feelings which flashes through the nerves, quickens the circulation of the blood and induces mental and physical health. Do you want to be healthy today? As our song um, says, I just want to be healthy. If you want to be healthy, then part of being healthy is being of help to others. This world, may God allow you to enjoy that well-being that is felt when you help the needy, either physically, mentally, or spiritually. May God bless us all. Amen. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us today on a very important um, trait of character, which is compassion. We thank you for the compassion that Jesus had when he was walked the face of this earth. Grant unto us that level of compassion that we will be able to help suffering humanity even as we go along life's way. Be with us, dear Father, and thank you for your word today and help us that as we move out of here, we will not be the same, but we will not pass anybody who needs our assistance. Have your way, we pray, with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a challenge by Sister Privo. Let us take up that challenge, especially in these times. You know, Jesus is our greatest example as he went about showing compassion. Let us endeavor to do the same. Our closing hymn is number 100, 100. Zero, zero. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my thunder. There is no shadow turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion. It fills not as thou. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. More than by morning, you must see thy tears. All that I need in thy
celebrate the faithfulness of God and his greatness and his compassion. And now, as we turn our attention to the benediction, we pray that God's compassion, having filled our souls, will flow out to others who are in need of the same. Lord, you have had compassion on us. You saw our great need. You left heaven and came to be with us and to model for us the existence that you would have us live. We ask that you would, through the power of your Holy Spirit, fill us with the ability to be able to demonstrate this compassion to others, that men and women may learn of Christ and recognize that although he is high and lifted up, he stoops low and bends down to reach those who are groveling in the dust, that he may lift them to safety. Be pleased to bless us as we bring our worship to a close and keep this message foremost in our minds that through the coming week, we will look for opportunities to demonstrate your compassion. For wherever Jesus went, he showed compassion. And surely we are under COVID and the some restrictions, but still from day to day, we are able to get out. May we demonstrate your love to others that will help to draw them to yourself. Be pleased to bless us as you dismiss us now. In Jesus' name, amen. I have just one announcement for you. 
And that is starting on Wednesday, every person at your own leisure is invited to join the global camp meeting of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. When last there was camp meeting in Barbados, there was in-house and person-to-person fellowship and sharing at Oldbury. But as we know, COVID has limited how we can interact. But over the virtual platform, there is no limit to our interaction with one another. Let us therefore join the Global Adventist Church camp meeting starting on Wednesday. I have put the link in the chat and I will post it in the church forum so that everyone at their own leisure can join and uh, see the exhibits, the booths. You no longer have to catch a plane to go to this camp meeting. It is right within your home. Do have yourselves a good Sabbath, every one of you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. And the, the El Agel has asked me to, four days for his absence, in that he had to attend to a matter, urgent matter. And he wants to let us know that this the starting the clean of the church started this week. We got the machine. There were one or two hiccups with the machine. The job is not yet complete but it's on its way and he wants to thank all those who came out and supported in the cleaning but as always you can do with some more hands so he want to just encourage us to assist in the cleaning because we're looking forward to the time we get back to our face-to-face -face meeting in the church as things changes i also want to Remind that next Sabbath, the 22nd, is the Agile Convention, sponsored by a conference and union, and they'll be taking charge of the service next Sabbath, or Agile Convention. As Sister Povo mentioned in her presentation, the hurricane season is on us, and the prediction is that it might be a very active one. With this in mind, Pastor Haynes, the community service leader, is arranging to have a training session for individuals on how we deal with emergencies, emergency management training. At present, the plan is for virtual because we are, we're still in a we're still in lockdown situation. But that training session is planned for the 27th, the end of the month, May 27th. And after the training, he's planning for us to have a dry run on the 30th to make sure that churches and individuals have things in place in case of emergency. In looking at this program, we recognize there will be challenges because of the COVID situation and restriction. But again, we have to work with what we have and we don't know what's happened going forward, but we plan as we go on. So I'll keep these dates before you on the 27th. All invited to know the train to the emergency disaster management training. And on the 30th, we won't have a, a dry run to see how things, how prepared we are, how well we are to fit in in case of emergency. And last, last Sabbath, remember, Brother Kyle and I, we launch an equipment drive. I want to thank all those who made the contribution thus far. But I want to let you know that every every bit count. Don't believe, don't don't think that your small that your amount is too small. No, every every amount counts, and the treasury is prepared to receive all your contributions. Or as I said before, you can call any of us to collect it from you in case you can't get it to the treasury. I want to thank you for your support thus far. And of course, as I said last week, 
as we said last week, we'll need this equipment and the streaming as we open church towards the end of the month or beginning of next month. We need this equipment so we can have a streaming so those who cannot come on Zoom at present will be able to have another video that's which they can meet with God and his people. So again, may we thank you for your contributions, for your support in all our drives. May God bless us. We thank you for being with us present today and enjoying the service together. And may God bless all of us as we look forward to his soon coming. God bless and thank you so much.